you guys for joining us for this informational panel here at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show at the Broward County Convention Center on opening day, Wednesday, October the 26th. Uh, my name is Evan Stone. I'm a co-founder and COO of the 1000 Mermaids Artificial Reef Project and the Ocean Rescue Alliance. And I'd like to introduce our esteemed panel here, our head of panel to themselves. My name is Shelby Thomas, co-founder and CEO of the Ocean Rescue Alliance and A Thousand Mermaids Project. We're a marine conservation and restoration organization implementing innovative techniques to solve marine issues. Hey everyone, my name is Josh Levy. I have the privilege of being the mayor of the city of Hollywood, Florida, just south of here, where we have seven miles of coastline and a lot, lots, and you'll learn a little bit about our underwater life uh, offshore. And so we're here to talk about those great things. Uh, and really talk about the wonderful things that we can do with our oceans. Thank you. And we're very grateful for Mary and Commissioner Carol Shuham and the entire Hollywood City Commission for getting behind the initiative and helping us fund the creation of our first artificial reef in Broward County. This is our second location with the Ocean Rescue Alliance, our first being in, in Palm Beach County. Uh, those that are not familiar with the reef project, shall we give us a little bit of a have a moment here? Yeah, absolutely. So we're super excited to be actually deploying this reef on Monday, October 31st. So next week, uh, check out our website to find out more information. But our organization, we build artificial reefs to create marine habitat and aid in restoration. And we combine art to connect the public to the ocean. And so this reef deployment's utilizing our Thousand Mermaids initiative to use a mermaid artificial reef and create a unique dive destination that helps marine environments. So we're actually getting ready to deploy 20 structures here on Monday down in the ocean to create marine habitat. And what's really exciting about this site is we have over 30,000 corals that we're going to be able to outplant here that will help restore this marine environment and connect communities together. So it's a unique dive site. It serves a great purpose not only for Coral restoration, ocean conservation, but ecotourism as well. Um, Josh, you spent a lot of time on the water growing up and living in Hollywood. Can you give us your personal and professional take on this project? So, you know, it's it's good fortune that we happen to be here at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show uh, because people who grow up here in South Florida, of course, uh, certainly uh, partake in boating, and boating is a huge part of our way of life here, and that means enjoying the ocean and the water. And oftentimes, of course, whether we're fishing or scuba diving or snorkeling, you know, what's under the water is really what's uh, sometimes even most special. So uh, it really feels great to uh, be able to have an opportunity, thanks to the Ocean Rescue Alliance, to uh, be able to supplement, you know, the reef system. We all know how important that is for our ecosystem here in South Florida uh, as a barrier for, for wave action, but also for marine habitat, as Shelby said. And so, uh, you know, having gone scuba diving myself and being a diver myself, and, and Enjoy snorkeling with the family too. Um, it's really exciting to be able to create more destinations and combining the art aspect of it uh, really makes it iconic and I think it's going to be a real big draw. If you think about the different, uh, of course there are many dive sites around the world thankfully, but like in Key Largo for example there's the big, uh, there's that uh, John Payne Camp State Park, there's the, uh, the, the Christ of the Abyss. Uh, and so that's a real you know, awesome uh, sight to see and, and people come from far away to see that. I think we're going to have hopefully the same uh, result here because you don't get to dive in uh, a reef that has figures and mermaids and what have you uh, elsewhere. And, and you combine that together with uh, the fish and the, uh, uh, the marine life, it's what a special, uh, what a special uh, uh, sight to see underwater. And then that underwater sculpture garden we're really excited to install in Hollywood. And Shelby, for those that might not be familiar with the situations plaguing our coral reefs and our oceans, could you give us a little bit of context as to the current situation as we're sitting here in 2022 and how uh, an artificial reef project like this can help support, hopefully, our initiatives to saving our coral reefs? Absolutely. So I first want to start out for you know, many in the marine industry really understand the value of our marine resources. But often, you know, it can seem as this blanket of water and hard to connect with. So we use art as a way to connect back to the ocean, but more importantly, we're designing structures that actually create complex marine habitat. And here in Florida, we have the third largest reef in the world. And some of our residents may not even know it. And on top of that, we have many issues plaguing our marine ecosystems. Here in Florida, we have a disease called stony tissue loss disease that's been 
drastically impacting all of our reef habitat and degrading natural reefs here in Florida. So it's an incredibly important precedence to do natural reef restoration and help restore these ecosystems. And one thing you know, we've really noticed is typically people tend to be reactive. Right, and, and not as proactive and pre preventative. We can't wait for our reefs to die to wonder where our fish are gonna go. And so the really incredibly important thing that we're able to do through creating artificial structure is to design reefs to mimic natural reef geology and actually support that fundamental ecosystem service of fisheries and being able to scale coral restoration in areas that might not be impacted by disease, might be in better growing conditions. And so as a scientist, I really have, have valued the also transition of us being able to connect art because that's incredibly important is to make things personal to people and connect people back to the ocean so this is a, a beautiful project where we're getting to really help the marine environment at the core but being able to connect communities and really engage and also help help other other businesses too we need to create more of a corporate responsibility for hotels and coastal developers to protect these resources that we're all getting to enjoy and be able to engage people on a more consistent basis. So this project's gonna enable that and we also, at every project site, continue doing restoration and conservation initiatives. So we'll continue to outplant and do research that will really press the leading edge of being able to scale restoration, but also to adaptive solutions. and. I could, I could give a, a good example. One of our really strong partners with the University of Miami is doing adaptive restoration for looking at assisted migration of stony corals. So we've been working on a project with them to look at genetics and see which corals might be better suited in this adapting climate condition. And we're outplanting those species and being able to facilitate new research that will really innovate and protect our corals and marine systems for generations to come. And aside from all of the environmental benefits that the corals provide, they actually provide an economic benefit over anywhere up to $7 billion of economic impact directly related to our reefs. They support thousands and thousands of jobs and truly a huge driver here in Southeast Florida. Uh, for those that might not be familiar with Hollywood, Florida, could, Josh, could you paint a little picture uh, as it relates to the tourism industry, the hospitality industry? I know you sit on the CRA board as well that oversees the beach and kind of some of the uh, initiatives and some of the uh, progress that's been made on the beach. Sure. So, like I said before, Evan, and thanks for the question, uh, we have seven miles of beach, and we're really fortunate in Hollywood to be in what we call the 50-yard line of South Florida between West Palm Beach and Miami. Uh, so uh, we really are well located and that makes it really convenient for, for visitors and tourists uh, to select Hollywood Beach as a place to stay while they're in town. And oftentimes when people come into South Florida, we may not realize it as residents, but they really are enamored with the beach and the marine life because they don't have that usually where they're coming from. Uh, so while we might take it for granted the day of the beach uh, for our visitors, it's really special. And so because of that, of course, there are thousands of hotel rooms along Hollywood Beach and the beaches of South Florida that welcome people and bring them to where they want to be. And connected to that, of course, is, a, is an ecosystem of, of uh, marine tourism uh, that is, of course, centered around boating, uh, whether it's the water taxi that goes through Hollywood and can take you to the different destinations uh, of Broward County along the waterways, uh, of course, the waterfront restaurants, but even better uh, are the dive boats and the charter uh, fishing boats that, and, and the rental boats uh, and the, the sightseeing boats that can take you, whether it's in an intracoastal to enjoy a sunset cruise or a day on the water, uh, or of course, a scuba diving trip to the reefs out of the water that Shelby was talking about. And so, uh, again, the marine industry and the marine, um, just the natural environment of, of, of the marine environment is really what draws people here in the end. When you have surveys that are done as to why people visit South Florida, um, we may think that they're coming for our culture and our restaurants, but no, they're actually coming for the beach first. And then they're coming to see family or work, but beach is the number one draw, and beach means ocean and environment. And they expect us to be good uh, caretakers of that environment. Our economy and our tourism depends on the preservation of uh, the waterways, uh, making sure they're clean and safe for people to enjoy. Uh, and also, all, for us, but also, as Shelby was saying, Really important that we preserve and make sure that we keep our reefs safe and our, and our fisheries safe because in the end that's the heart of what they're coming for whether it's score fishing or scuba diving uh, and, and that's really a, a big component of it and so I'm looking forward to this project to come in the water because I want to scuba dive here uh, you know often and see its growth uh, actually I was at the uh, a global uh, luncheon earlier today here at the boat show and somebody was 
uh, asking me to, to make sure to let them know where this reef was located because they're interested in diving this every six months and taking a photo every six months to see how the reef is progressing and how the corals are growing and make it like, for example, a, uh, you know, a, a, uh, an adventure of their own selves to see how a reef like this can take, take hold and continue. So Shelby, maybe Shelby can tell us a little bit about how, uh, what she expects uh, in terms of the, the growth and how quickly. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're all very impatient, by the way. <laughs> I know. This has been a long time coming for those who haven't, haven't been following, but the really incredible thing of putting these reef sites out, I always say, is, as builders say it, if you build it, they will come. That's quite true with fish. They move in that night. And in terms of benthic growth and, and coral recruitment, we get that actually really rapidly as well, between three and six months. And we can even expedite that process from outplanting different species on it, which is what we intend to do and working with other organizations and universities to do so. So in, in addition to doing research, we're actually able to really expedite doing restoration and conservation where we can outplant corals with the community. And I think this is the really beautiful thing about this site is we have an opportunity to work with um, non-endangered species of corals as well that really will open up an opportunity to engage the public more. And uh, as you know, there's lots of permits and regulations that go into conducting these water activities. So we're getting first extremely excited to be able to really for the first time do a holistic program that can connect the community, enable the public to get engaged in restoration, learning about it, and advancing research at the same time. But the whole advancement of, of seeing how this reef changes over time, nature becomes the artist. And so that's what's so unique to see these sculptures and these reefs really change rapidly. And every time you come to it, it's going to look a little different. And so that's really encouraging even from an ecotourism standpoint. If you came to help it help plant a coral and come back five years later, and you can see that change in the reef, know that impact that's made. And you know, the beautiful thing is we're also getting to not only create marine life, but also eventually help enhance habitat and protect against coastal erosion. So we're excited to get into other developments. Um, this reef is more specifically for habitat and creating also ecotourism connection, but we also have infrastructure that can really protect against coastal erosion. And as you know, that's immensely important for every coastal community. I mean, we are getting hit with storms, right? We just had a, an incredibly damaging storm on the west coast of Florida. and. This is happening all over the world, so this needs to be at the forefront. We need to be investing into coastal infrastructure that will protect our communities, but also restore our marine ecosystems more sustainably than current methods. Thankfully, there are some great initiatives in the works with further uh, coastal protection reefs and, and wave mitigation reefs and so, wave attenuation reefs and so on and so forth. Um, I know there's a lot of people that do want to get involved from a citizen science perspective, either documenting uh, identifying fish or actually helping us outplant the coral and that from a citizen science perspective. Um, fortunately, through the hard work of the Ocean Rescue Alliance, we've been put in a position to uh, outplant and transplant thousands of corals. Could you, for those that maybe aren't familiar when you say coral outplanting, could you outline uh, the situation and the opportunity for people to get involved as well as with our adopt a coral program? Yeah, absolutely. So we currently have uh, various different methods for doing coral restoration with different coral practitioners, and some of those are Coral Restoration Foundation, University of Miami, Nova Southeastern, FWC as well. And essentially what they do is um, do upscaled restoration through taking coral fragments, just how you can propagate a plant. You can actually cut coral colonies into small fragments to then expedite their growth and outplant at scale. And so we're part, part of facilitating the outplant process by creating bases that can be placed on natural reefs, but we also have technologies like the coral lock, which is a threaded frag plug, where we can place these corals and rapidly attach them to our structures by simply screwing it in, just like you would a bolt. And so that part really enables, uh, uh, it takes the complexity out of outplanting so you don't have to individually glue and cement or epoxy a coral down, that may take, take training. Now we can just simply screw in a coral to our structure. And that, from an engagement opportunity, people can come out, we can have a five-year-old do that, right? It, it's very, very sim simple compared to traditional methods, so it really opens an opportunity to outplant hundreds of corals at a time, engaging more people to do it, and more importantly, getting more coral out there, doing more restoration, 
and protecting communities in the process. So I think that's what's really amazing with the technologies that we have that are embedded into our reefs, but also can scale up natural reef restoration. And working with our partners to adapt, we've been working with like a variety of the Florida universities to do different types of bases for specific purposes, as well as artificial reefs, as we mentioned. We have ones for coastal resilience. We have ones for specific complex habitat. We have ones for restoration, not only for corals, but oysters and mangroves, and then also the art component. So it's, it's really strategically designing things to be immediately impactful to that marine environment, but being able to scale restoration as a whole. It allows us, if you're not familiar with these coral fragments, micro fragments, super corals, this is one of the most encouraging breakthroughs in coral restoration in our fight to help save the coral reefs. And with these advances in engineering and technology, we're now able to outcamp more corals faster and easier with safer materials than ever before, eliminating the metal, the epoxy, and the zip ties that were used in previous in traditional restoration methods, which is the best you know methods that currently at the moment. Uh, zip ties work everywhere, you know. Hey, but no. Obviously, this uh, this method is way better. No yes. Well, and thankfully. Um, so these are initiatives that we're glad to bring to the City of Hollywood. City of Hollywood has already undertaken many initiatives to support our ecosystem and our environment. Uh, Josh, if you could maybe share just some of the proudest accomplishments from the uh, plastic and the foam band, uh, to the straws, to the initiatives with the sea turtles. What are some of the initiatives that you've been the most proud of from the commission perspective undergoing in Hollywood? Well, I think clearly the most special uh, undertaking by us is supporting this reef project really um, you know it's a lot more special than your uh, I don't want to say your everyday park but we're doing special things and, and I want to talk about that uh, but certainly this is the most special and the most uh, um, eco unique uh, and, and innovative uh, project that we're embarking on over the past six years that I've been in office um, and, and you know, it's been many decades since artificial reefs have been put in into our waterways uh, off of Broward County and in Hollywood, and so thank you really to you all for you know helping to pick that back up and make it uh, you know something that, that people can realize could be still done in today's regulatory environment, and one that of course brings in the arts, which in downtown Fort Lauderdale we're really trying to um, to make a staple. And thanks, Evan, to you for what you do with the arts, and I want to hear from you later about the arts aspect of this. Okay, but um, I think people will be interested in that. But in Hollywood, um, of course, we talked about the. Uh, plastics and foam bands. We want to make sure that our, our beach is safe uh, for, for marine life and also for, for birds and for, for animals that uh, you know have part of their life experience on the, on the beach. And of course, we want to make it clean for uh, beachgoers as well. And so getting rid of single-use plastics, reducing them, having more opportunities to recycle certainly makes us good, better stores of the environment and also results in a, in a cleaner beach and a, a safer beach for animal life. Uh, but one of the also special things that I'm really proud of is as part of our 2019 bond where the community decides that it wants to borrow money for something, uh, one of the things that uh, the community voted to borrow money for is the creation of a new 45-acre park uh, on Johnson Street 995 called the uh, Sunset Property. It used to be a golf course. Uh, it was shuttered for many, many years. And we um, you know, uh, uh, pushed the idea of the city buying the property and not having it go to just necessarily development but uh, to preserve it as a park and as a stormwater uh, basin for the surrounding area, we know that you know we're going to need uh, destinations for floodwaters in the future. And so we, as a community, invested $12 million to buy this property. And now we're working on a master plan to turn into a park and a stormwater utility uh, for the city. And that'll be you know somewhere where kids and families uh, can go for generations to come and enjoy something new. And so you don't really get an opportunity as a mayor every day to be able to you know, basically uh, buy and build the city's largest park, uh, aside from the beautiful county parks that we have, North Beach Park, Westlake Park, and T.Y. Park. So, really excited. Uh, you know, in Florida, obviously the environment and the outdoors is, is what's most special about our life here. And so to be able to improve upon that and to create better destinations for people to enjoy those spaces, like we're doing here with the reefs, even on land, is, is really in the end the most special thing that you could leave to, the, to our kids and, and their kids and, and for the future. And if you haven't been to Hollywood Beach in a while, or if you haven't been before, it really is a clean beach. We made a lot of initiatives to clean up the, board, uh, the boardwalk. We've a lot of initiatives 
just, not just with the plastic and the foam bands, but it's a really great place to take your family. Uh, it's, you know, no disrespect to Fort Lauderdale Beach, but it's more family oriented, and I personally enjoy living there and frequenting the beach as well. All you need is your flip flops. Yes. Um, I was, regarding the art element, I happen to be a, a very passionate arts advocate and community builder born and raised here in Broward County as well, and we believe in the power of art. We believe in the power of art as communication, storytelling, history. These are going to live on the bottom of the sea floor forever. This is going to be part of your legacy, our legacy, and people that um, contribute and participate and support the project's legacy. We've created opportunities. We initially started casting and sculpting local in the members of the community with plaster. We found new innovations and technologies to be able to increase efficiency with virtual reality scanning and some of the technology advancements. So now we've even been able to create reefs in the likeness, fortunately, unfortunately, of firefighters and paramedics that passed away, uh, just based off of a photograph with advances in VR technology. We also have the ability to create a reef uh, in the likeness of uh, a company's logo or their branding. Um, we have abilities to also attach and affix plaques onto the base of these reefs as well. So we have options for different uh, budgets, different price points, people that want to get involved. Not everybody can commission an individual artificial reef structure, which we only ask anywhere from twelve to $15,000, which is really nominal for something that's going to help the environment and live on the seafloor forever. But we have plaques available for a few hundred dollars. We have the adopt a uh, program available for as little as $25. So um, I appreciate you bringing the art because the art really does have the ability to not only transform communities and transform lives, but hopefully help transform and save our oceans and save our reefs one reef at a time. Um, with regards to ways that people can get involved in some of our future initiatives, uh, Shelby, could you maybe spell out some of the other ways people can get involved between the adopt and flow program and some of our other future plans? So we have a lot of different programs available on our website, oceanrescuealliance.org. So we specifically make different areas for impact. So we believe in making it accessible, the ocean accessible. So that's why we're excited for also doing nearshore reefs. But you can adopt a coral with us, volunteer even virtually, but also create your own reef. That's a, a wonderful way to give back to the marine environment that lives for generations to come. And in terms of events, we also are planning to do lots of citizen science and education events around each project site. So once this reef's in the water next week, we'll be doing at least quarterly monitoring. So you can come out and dive with us. We'll be doing beach cleanups and other community workshops, engaging with different schools. We're also currently trying to fundraise for underserved youth to actually be able to make some of these resources more accessible, getting students certified and coming on, on dives to help do restoration. So there's lots of future plans many ways to get engaged both on, in land, on, on land and in the water. So really uh, check out our website, send us an email, there's plenty of opportunity. Uh, I wanted to touch really quick back on, on the art side and just environmental stewardship and one of the you know, most amazing things, you, you all are really leading this as a city and, and most cities have not done this kind of work. And so, I think that's incredibly inspiring, and we're honored and blessed to be working with you guys for this. I think it, it really, you know, pushing as a leader forward, it, it demonstrates you know, what a lot of communities need to do, and hotels that, again, are, are utilizing these resources, and we live here, right? Um, and sometimes that narrative's you know, pulled, pulled out, and I think the beautiful thing about the art is it is a way to personally engage, whether it be with different hotels or brands, that's a little more sentimental and personal, that people can look, leave their mark in a unique way, but still create massive impact. And so, with this Hollywood Reef starting, we really want to incentivize the community, other businesses, and Hollywood to continue building this reef. This is phase one, and we have a lot that we need to do. Uh, lots of lots of more deployments that would need to happen in the future. And, you know, if it may, I mean, one a really great creative example of things that we can do even aerially. Maybe we'll, we'll push this at the Hard Rock. <laughs> uh, we thought about doing a guitar-shaped reef where we could fly over the ocean that. and see a guitar, but then we can make each sculpture a different musician. So it really tailors to their brand, but more importantly gets a project in the water that creates habitat and aids in restoration. So 
if there's there's any companies that want to get engaged, still create you know unique sites. Maybe you'd have some suggestions. I love I love that tie-in. I love that tie-in, Shelby, and and I think once this is in the water, I think people are going to fall in love and, and ask how can I how can I get in on this. And I know that's that's really uh, key here. Uh, I think it's going to take off, especially where we've already sorted out you know permitting and sort of uh, validated through the regulatory bodies locally here what this is and. And I think uh, you know, we'll be able to hopefully do this a lot quicker um, you know, for the next phases. I'm already loving the idea of moving forward with uh, the swim from shore, near shore reef. I'm ready to go on that. All those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. <laughs> Thanks to the audience, they're in support. Um, and, and I'll tell you, this particular reef that we're installing on Monday, I'm uh, pretty sure is uh, not far offshore from the Diplomat, Diplomat Be Beach Resort, our largest convention hotel, where very large conventions come on a on a, uh, on a weekly basis, thousands of people, industries. Uh, I'm happy to, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk to the hotel, because those conventions that come in, what better uh, thing to show their thousand person audience of their industry, that their industry is now, you know, a, a benefactor of an underwater environment. We could probably do something special on a, uh, on a weekly basis with those groups, and maybe even have a dive boat go out from, from uh, the diplomat, so. Uh, there's a lot that we can do here, and so I'm excited. Uh, sky's the limit, I'll say ocean's the limit, that are more fitting here. Could you say the location where it's going to be? Uh, could you just give some context to the location and how deep and how far out? Yeah. So, so this first deployment site is actually going to be very close to the shore. It's about a half mile off, but it's a 40 feet site, so we recommend for you to dive there. It's an easy open water dive. But we are extremely excited to you know, announce we actually have some clearance for a near shore sn snorkel reef that's already permitted. So that means we're ready to go for construction once funding's there, and that will be very accessible. So in the future, we're planning to build this reef out. Right now, it'll be right off of Hollywood Beach. We'll have the coordinates on our website and also be coordinating with the city to make that accessible to the community so you can come, come check it out. There's also going to be a list of the different dive operators that will be servicing and doing dives there. Uh, and as we continue to expand, well, again, all of our coordinates are also on our website for our other reefs. So we really encourage you to, to go explore Florida and, and get into the marine environment and get engaged. And um, Josh is very humbly mentioned uh, Hollywood Support of the Arts. I've thankfully been able to play a small part in supporting Hollywood's uh, art initiatives. So if you are considering coming to Florida's Hollywood for a vacation, uh, for a you know diving excursion after you get out of the water. We have a beautiful arts park right in the heart of downtown. Has a weekly series of events, movies in the park, uh, world-renowned music acts. You had the Marley Cup uh, just a couple months ago. Um, there is the Downtown Hollywood Mural Project, which is the largest concentration of public art murals, street art, anywhere outside of Wynwood. Uh, with world-class muralists from the London Police to Ernesto Morante to local artists as well. Um, and then there's studios, there's galleries, there's really cool coffee shops, there's a lot of culture. Also probably one of the largest um, options of different culinary options from Indonesian to Indian to Moroccan to everybody else in between. So if you are considering, if you've never been to downtown Hollywood, you've never been to Hollywood Beach, there's a plethora of things to do after you get out of the water, and we're going to give you at least 20 artificial reefs to start to explore in the water with this underwater sculpture garden. Really hopeful for the future growth and success of this project. If you happen to be here during the boat show this week and you want to join us and get involved, we're actually hosting a fundraising dinner at Gigi's Waterfront um, on Hollywood Beach this Sunday, uh, October the 30th at 5.30 p.m. Proceeds from the dinner are going to benefit uh, our artificial reef initiatives. Uh, we're going to have a style and option. You're going to have an opportunity to meet Shelby, myself, and the team. Find out more ways you can get involved. We are going to have the deployment shortly thereafter that, hopefully early next week, weather dependent. Um, we're going to hope for the best. And we, you know, we're very modest. We're very humble with the work that we do, and we welcome the support of anybody. From somebody that wants to sign up to be a volunteer diver, we have a, a volunteer diver sign up form on our website um, to somebody that would like to provide a boat to take out divers and people that would like to explore the reef that maybe don't have access to a boat and those resources. 
Uh, we're also always looking for uh, board members that would like to support, be it an attorney, an accountant, somebody that uh, is ocean-minded, is blue-minded, that shares our values, that would like to give back on a, on a time basis, on a larger level, we could definitely use help in that regard. And um, really, anybody else in between, from the Tourist Development Council to you know the state, and if you know you know anybody that really aligns with the ocean and would like to have their legacy live forever under the seafloor, as we mentioned, we have various opportunities that we're enabling people to do so. Uh, people commission sculptures to go in the backyard of their homes, 60, 70, 80, 100 thousand dollars, and that's great for them and their friends and family to see and love and enjoy. This is something that literally everybody, it's public art, the highest form of art that's the most accessible, um, you know, without having to, you know, pay an entry fee to a museum to go see public art. So we're really excited to do that. This is going to bring our total count of artificial reefs in South Florida to 100. We initially set out five years ago when we launched a thousand mermaid artificial reef project to create a thousand. We figured 10 would be too little, 100 would be attainable. A thousand is kind of like an infinite number that even if we get to that number, we're still going to continue uh, going above and beyond, making new sites, new projects. We have uh, some plans and conversations uh, in Mexico for some specific reefs, and um, we're open to any other ideas and plans that uh, somebody that's listening to this talk would like to bring forward. Uh, Shelby, if you want to maybe wrap up just um, any other thoughts or any other future plans that we could use to support for. Yeah, so, so certainly the, the ocean has limitless potential, right, for doing a lot of these projects to engage community. I think the most fundamental side of growth where I really fell in love with art as a scientist is because it's it's a universal language that's been historically connects communities, inspires people, and can really bring this different inspiration. You and I can dive the site and, and both feel a completely different moment when engaging with art. And so I think it, it makes doing restoration and assessing you know, these important problems that are plaguing our oceans in a totally different light that's more engaging than doing coral restoration. Not everyone may care about coral but they should care about corals, and not only you know, all the values it brings to marine ecosystem services and the economy, but just the education of how important our oceans are. To us living on this planet, we would not be here without the ocean. So ocean health is critical, and this isn't really educated into a lot of systems. So changing people's relationship with the marine environment and the environment itself is critical. We have to shift public perception. And I think the biggest value our brings is the ability to do that because it's personal. And now we can make memorials, we can celebrate anniversaries, we can celebrate companies that can leave a legacy that helps rebuild ecosystems and more impactfully. And, and for example, one project we're, we're still fundraising for and really looking forward to, I'm personally extremely excited and passionate about it. We're doing a Mayan theme reef in Mexico where we're working with a Mayan native and it's our first culturally relevant reef. And so working with that community, we're able to bring awareness to mind culture and immediately serve that community and let them guide that art direction and still create habitat, connect and do restoration. And we're creating a regenerative ecosystem here. So we're investing at every future generation into protecting this resource. And it's a way that we can craft, let's say every city in Florida or every hotel in Florida across the, the way, right? We can inspire them to contribute to this. All take part, all take action. It's, it's not gonna be on our taxpayer dollars. It's not gonna be on grants. It's not gonna get done to the scale that we need. So we really need that ability to invest. And I think that's where art pr provides a powerful catapult to do it because now it's, it's creative, it's engaging, it means something different to everyone. And, I, and that's really what I, I wanted to end with because I think there's so much potential and it's exciting and everyone can engage. And that's one thing I love as a scientist that sometimes, you know, we could be a little narrow-minded. And I'll tell you, when I started this, I, I got a lot of heat from scientists. Why are you doing art? Why are you putting art in the ocean? Because it connects people. And it can actually fund probably way more than we ever would do with restoration. And so I think we need to do it for other projects too, not just the ocean. We need to involve art in doing, you know, tree restoration and, and living sea, sea, sea lines and everything, right? 
Um, so, yeah, I just want to end with that. I, I'm extremely excited. I'm incredibly grateful. You guys are really leading the front end of this and having, you know, not only faith in us, but actually taking that accountability for those marine resources and protecting that and investing in it for generations to come. So we're incredibly thankful to be here and doing this project with you guys, and we hope we can continue this relationship and let's push some more people to do it. Yeah, well, just listening to Shelby, of course, uh, she motivates, right? She uh, really brings home the passion about the science, about the marine life, and, and certainly what she says about the arts, Evan, yourself, and Shelby, uh, really helps people have that identifiable uh, you know, destination. Uh, take a photo of it, even underwater, and it's now a recognizable figure that everyone can relate to, as you said, not just people who scuba dive. So I think this is really uh, an amazing opportunity that you've brought to uh, city of Hollywood that we're so excited to have uh, come in the water and uh, I'll be so excited to help uh, push along and, and expand awareness as mayor and I know our residents will and take a lot of pride in having this in our waterways. We're going to be really uh, a unique destination with just this first project and I'm already looking forward to supporting the, uh, the near shore reef project. So and also I'm also thinking of the speed dial of, of the different corporations that I, I know as mayor uh, and really be able to uh, offer them this opportunity. I'm sure a lot of them would love to have this on, on as part of their corporate identity and, and to bring this uh, to give pride to their workforce as well. So thank you so much for bringing this to the City of Hollywood Ocean Rescue Alliance. Uh, we're ready. Let's, let's do it, right? Monday. Let's put this in the water. Amen. I, I flashed uh, this uh, front of the notebook for um, Israel Meets Innovation from the Consulate General of Israel. And if uh, any of you remember, I know Josh remembers from when we were growing up, there was always a call for donations to plant trees in Israel. And when I finally went on Birthright and I went to Yad Vashem and I saw the vast amount of trees, I was like, wow, that actually worked. They actually planted a forest of trees in Israel. Um, so it is possible. Um, there are some other initiatives that when we do get larger scale funding up and running, um, we do plan to create not just a citizen science program, but a coral gardener and coral farmer program where we can teach the youth to get certified in diving, coral restoration, helping us out plant coral. Not every kid goes to college. Not every kid even goes to trade school. What if the kids just want to be able to dive and help save the coral reef? What if we could pay somebody fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year to pursue their passion? Because there is literally more corals that need to be outplanted and transplanted than there is air in tanks and divers to deploy them. So we could literally create this next wave of coral gardeners and coral farmers that would hopefully be able to scale this outplanting and this restoration initiatives um, and be able to make an even larger impact. My last thought in closing, and I'll, I'll uh, have Shelby share her last thoughts in closing, and this is very fitting here at the boat show. Uh, I did just want to say, once again, many thanks to Informa, the Fort Lauderdale National Boat Show. This is actually our third year being involved. Uh, John Nagro, God bless him, allowed us to previously set up reefs outside um, in, the, in the boat show, which was like an $80,000 spot that they gave to us in kind, God bless him. Um, but, you know, for those of you that do care about boating in the marine industry, no reef, no fish, and nobody wants to sail on the dead ocean. And that's a fact. That's true, and I, I just wanted to touch on that, the final point of just the blue economies becoming a little bit more aware, right? And I think we have so much immense opportunity to be innovative, and the most beautiful thing, I think, we have everything we need to solve a lot of the world's pressing issues. It's getting the right people to the table to collaborate and actually get it done. And we have su such advanced technology, you know, we're using in designing these reefs to mimic natural structure that you can just see the capacity of how this creates jobs. And creating this site will create jobs. Dive operators will be bringing divers there. Tourists will be coming here, spending money in the city to come see the reef and be part of doing restoration. So I think that's the, the best thing is it's really regenerative and it's supporting community. It's, it's supporting the economy, but more importantly, helping our ecosystems. And you know, there's just so much more beauty to come. And again, from planting the forest, let's let's plant the reefs. Let's let's keep growing it. Let's let's take over Florida. So that's that's my vision. Amen. And if you uh, there's one more uh, than to mention, if you'd like to find out, uh, well, if you'd like to 
find out more about the project, you can log on to oceanrescuealliance.org, thousandmermaids.com. Um, we also host a monthly breakfast lecture series, mini TED Talk event, which was initially my aha moment that served as my inspiration to get into art, culture, community building, and place making. Uh, and I decided to continue paying it back and paying it forward by bringing in local, thought-provoking, inspiring speakers to share their relatable stories. Shelby's going to be our next speaker, and it's very fitting in November. It's on the second Friday morning of every month, November the 11th. We're actually going to host it in downtown Hollywood at Arts Park at a beautiful place called Hollywood Hot Class. Um, and Shelby will share more of her personal and professional story. We um, do like to keep things positive and paint a pretty picture of the situation for as bleak as it is for oceans. But uh, this has not been an easy journey for Shelby or myself. Um, you know, and Shelby's going to share a lot of the challenges that she's had to overcome personally and professionally, uh, what the situation is for women in the marine biology industry, and um, hopefully inspire this next wave of female marine biologists and just marine biologists overall because we do need more stewards of the ocean. So that's going to be, uh, it's called AAF Creative Zen. It's the second Friday morning of every month. Shelby happens to be our next speaker, uh, sharing her story right after we deploy this reef at Hollywood Hot Class. Downtown Hollywood, doors open at 8.30, talk starts at 9, you're out of there by 10 a.m. If you need something to tell your boss, I've got a list full of truthful things. You're going to be getting inspiration, making connections. That changed my life, so I like to pay it back and pay it forward. We appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, we're going to post this on our social medias and on our YouTubes. So uh, please feel free to share with anybody. Tell a friend, tell a friend. And I um, appreciate you guys caring about the oceans. You have a good day.